Hi, um, my name's Judy, and this is uh, my mum, Sue. Uh, these are two Irish water spaniels. They're um, bred for working, and uh, we also sh show them as well. Um, they make fantastic pets and um, enjoy you know, being out and about and, and socially. The breed is supposed to maintain a liver puce coloured coat, quite rich and dense curls. They have very large web feet, which are used for swimming with, very powerful in the water. Um, their body structure is, is quite broad. They've got a, a rib cage that's barrel shaped. Um, with this, they um, are very powerful in the water and can cover ground quite quickly and quite fast. They have quite good endurance whilst out you know, covering rough land and they tend to be able to keep going at a steady rate. I think really and truly the Irish Water Spaniel are all purpose. They really are. They are very, very good at obviously at working, um, agility, obedience. Um, some have been used by the RAF as well. So a very, very durable dog, able to adapt to most situations. In the past we've had Water Spaniels that have been used for uh, pat dogs and which we've gone out and visited people with learning disabilities and old people's homes. A very tactile animal. Um, the good thing about them is the fact that they are tactile but they don't lose a lot of coat. They do carry a bit of dust in their coat so you do get that sort of dusty doggy smell but generally you know they're, they're a nice tactile dog. You don't have lots of hair flying everywhere. Um, I'm very happy to be around lots of people. The Irish Water Spaniel generally were bred for wild fowling. Um, they're naturally a uh, fantastic retriever, but uh, can also go out and flush and use as a beating and picking up dog. Um, and this is generally what they were bred for um, over the years and what they were used for. When we talk about waterfowls, it's when they're going out and that they're working marshy, boggy lands. They're particularly good out in retrieving um, dead um, fowl out in, in uh, out of boggy areas and water. Brilliant swimmers, obviously. Their um, you know their coat, though it looks dense. Um, as they come out of the water, it, it runs off them as well. Their throat is uh, usually a very short hair that gives them smooth entry into the water. And their tail is, is known as the whip tail or the rat tail. And that can be used as the rudder in the water when they're turning. And as I mentioned before, their feet are very big and they, when they're spread out into the water, they're webbed. In general, when the water spaniel has been brought up around children and other dogs, cats, animals, and that, they are really, really good. But um, they, if they're isolated at all and not brought up in a, a busy environment, they can become quite reserved, and um, it can be quite a shock to their system if they're suddenly introduced to children or uh, smaller animals, or even sort of equine and things like that. They can become a bit shy and reserved and need quite a lot of coaxing to get over that. I would say they are quite slow to mature and they take a lot of time and it's, it's really good to go back over and over some of the work you're doing with them with to do with their obedience and their behaviour. In general water spaniels do like company. They don't mind being left once they've got used to being left in the house but they do like other dogs or other animals around them as well and generally like to be with, with people and their owners. You do find that whatever you leave lying around will be retrieved, especially if it's something belonging to their owner. And they do like to carry things about, whether it be a slipper, a glove. This is just their natural retrieving ability. They're not always so keen to give it up, and it's a really good idea to try and encourage them to give it up because as time goes on, you want to do a bit more basic training with them and retrieving with them. It's a good stage to learn in, within the home as a puppy that, that they must bring the, the item back and um, that you can take it off them quite well. In general, the Water Spaniel is not really a very noisy breed. Um, they bark when they're warning their owners of somebody at the door, or if they hear a strange noise outside, that can take them off. They're quite wary. It generally take time to get adjusted to different things, so they can bark at new events and new noises. But in general, they are a quiet breed. In general, they do need to have um, a, a good amount of exercise. Um, a good run or swim is, is ideal for a water spaniel to have a really good swim. Um, I would say that we probably let us have good runs sort of um, in, you know, an hour a day. 
um, which is broken up between maybe two or three walks to keep your dog really fit is a good road walk but free play is good retrieving as I say and swimming again is, is really good for them they are quite a lively breed but once they have had a good run and a play they do tend to settle down really nicely um, when we come home but always up for another walk again one of the most important things is mental stimulation. Absolutely, yes. So yeah, it's really I'm important. All, normally, even if it's only five or ten minutes, I will do a bit of retrieving, something like that, where they're having to learn that they've got to sit, stay, only go when they're told. And certainly, they just love to retrieve. So it means they're very happy doing it, but they've also got to learn the steadiness. In terms of training, um, you know, generally most people that are going to do some uh, sort of working trials with their dogs don't tend to use food for training. Um, some will accept food for training, but generally I would say most water spaniels um, don't listen or, or respect the idea of having food uh, as part of their training aid. Basically they have to learn respect to their owner and enjoy doing what they're doing before you actually get see some really positive results with them um, as a breed. Having said that, this one's a little one who is so food orientated that giving her a treat now and then does work. But with her dad, that didn't work. He wasn't at all interested in treats. He just wanted to do the work. This breed is uh, incredibly intelligent, um, too intelligent sometimes. And I think that can be overlooked sometimes with the training as seen, seen as being naughty and uh, challenging, but it's not. It's just their mind is always working over time. They're, they're always looking a step ahead. And I think keeping that under tap is quite difficult with the water spaniel because um, that's where they show the, the, the challenges when you are training them. It just needs an awful lot of time and patience. Mm -hmm. One day you could go out and think you've really achieved it with your dog and it, it completely goes the other way. So it's really, really important to have patience with them and accept the fact that um, although they, they're acting as if um, you know, they're not listening to you at all, they are listening, but they're also thinking ahead of you as well and what, what could happen next. So um, quite a difficult breed, lots of patience needed and lots of repetitive training um, really helps the water spaniel. Um, with the water spaniel, their coat um, is very dense and thick and not very easy to maintain in respect if they're going out into the woodland and things. It does pick up lots of dirt and mud. Um, however, it doesn't shed and we have found that lots of people that have allergies to certain breeds do not have an allergy to the Irish water spaniel. Um, that they, the, the, what you tend to get out of a water spaniel is maybe a little bit, as we call it in the breed, a tumbleweed coming out. Um, a good wide tooth comb will help with reducing that and taking that stuff out. It's always best to try and do quite a good grooming program a couple of times a week to get out anything that's stuck in there because it will get matted up. It, it's very, very dense indeed and it can get caught up under their arms. Um, it's naturally oily, so generally it does keep itself clean, but you do get this pungent doggy odour that uh, is unique to the water spaniel um, and which really only our Irish water spaniel people love and adore. Um, people come into our ho house sometimes and go, oh what's that? And it's like, wow, it's the water spaniel perfume I'm afraid. <laughs> so um, they do have that and, and you have to learn to live with it. You know, they, they, they cope when they go out into water, good streams and fresh, fresh water, it gives it a really good clean and it looks a lovely natural oily colour. But if they've been out into bog land and onto muddy areas and that, it can get a bit dull and dusty. So sometimes it's a good idea to, to try and get some of that washed out without using too many chemicals and shampoos and things with them, just to rinse it off. If you can find a clean river for them to swim in, it's ideal to get that coat nice and clean again and keep the natural oils that an Irish water spaniel has in their coat it's sustained within that coat. They have got spaniel ears. It will need a lot of grooming. Their ears will need cleaning, especially if they're going in and out of water. They do tend to get quite sort of smelly ears, so it's a good idea to keep an eye on their ears all the time. Generally, what we use on their coat is a wide tooth comb so that we don't break the curls and, and the natural oils in their coats. If they've got a really thick coat, we'll use um, a wire tooth brush 
um, to really sort of rake out some of the, the heavier bits of bracken that can get caught up in their coats. So they are, I would say, quite high maintenance in respect of their coat. However, a lot of the working people do tend to cut their coat off either with scissors or, or clipping to keep it really short through the shooting season and then if they are happening to show later on in the, in the year, they'll let it grow and um, they'll have a better coat for showing. In terms of health, um, generally as responsible breeders, um, we tend to have hips, um, elbows and eyes done. And there's a certain level that you look for with that. And most breeders wouldn't breed if it goes above that. Anybody that's thinking about taking their bitch to a stud dog um, or the other way around, everybody will make sure that these tests will be done and uh, before any breeding is arranged. Because we are actually a very small gene pool within the breed, at the moment we don't have any limitations on us at all as breeders with regards to that, but we are all very much aware. You know, there, there has been issues known to do with their coat and their skin and that's always been looked into. We do do DNA profiles with the Kennel Club um, and um, most breeders have carried that out. We've carried that out with our dogs and we're mm. happy to mention um, anything that's occurred in, in our breed at all, whether it's to do with you know, cancer, heart, skin problems, autoimmune disease. And generally, uh, we do look at those, those things seriously as breeders and discuss it within our um, clubs, which we have two clubs of. Um, that people can, can join. I think the one thing people should consider with this breed particularly is the fact that they can be challenging. They're not just another spaniel at all. Um, they are known as a spaniel but they are a retriever. They, they love to do, they're always wanting to do something new and different and I think we have to look at those things um, always when, when we, we're looking at uh, new owners coming in to look at puppies always asking the question you know where are, you know what do you do you know your work patterns you have to look at all those things all the time when you go away on holiday would you have that organized um, they don't like change very much they do like to to know where they are and what they're doing most of the time but I think the, the one thing you can do with a water spaniel if you get it out there if you socialize it really really well generally they adapt to everything and anything but they are quite a sensitive breed and that mustn't be forgotten within this. You know, you see our two today, they're very bold and confident. Uh, the reasons for that is because they have such a social life, they go out to events, we do events at, at crafts, at Discover Dogs, we do the game fairs where they're always on display. And I have a, a young son, he's always around the dogs, he's always around the puppies when they're being born. So. We make sure, as breeders, that they are socialised really, really well, and that's very, very important at a very early stage. If you're deciding to get an Irish Water Spaniel, um, you must go to a, a reputable breeder that's um, been registered with the Kennel Club, and it's always ideal, definitely, to see both parents if you can, but at least one of the parents. When you're going out to look at these puppies, you must spend some time looking at them, spend some time with them, because it takes Irish Water Spaniel puppies in particular quite a long time to show their real characters. Dogs can be very strong and powerful. They need a strong handler because they are a powerful breed. The bitches generally a little bit easier than the male dogs. They take a less time maybe to adapt and socialise with things, but always look very closely at the background and, and the breeding um, patterns that have gone on within the, the breeders and talk to the breeders, really ask lots of questions. And what we find is we encourage people, if we've heard that they're interested in a puppy, to go out and meet other Irish Water Spaniels first. So if you've got somebody that's living too far away from you, arrange with another breeder. This is what we do as a club. We arrange with another breeder for them to go out and meet these other dogs, meet the puppies, see the older stage of dogs because as they get older they have more ailments and they can probably smell a little bit more they, so they really must take on the whole picture of a water spaniel because they are a very unique breed and as a general rule there's only about a hundred puppies born a year so quite often people will have to be on a waiting list from a family's point of view, I've had them since I was 13 years of age. My son has grown up with them and he's been a lucky child to be able to grow up with a breed like this because they are magical. They're a clown in themselves. Every day is something different, they something are funny. They are known, aren't they? It's the clown, clown of, of the, the dog world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
there is just something about this breed that absolutely stills your heart. Yes, they can be challenging and you can have days where you think, <laughs> oh, but generally yeah. they just make you smile. They are just so, so happy and so loving and so loyal. Mm.